Pentagon officials confirmed today the death of Al-Shabaab leader Ahmed Gaudane in Somalia. They said the extremist militant was killed in a U.S. air raid on Monday. In Wales, President Obama touted the killing as the latest example of American efforts to degrade terrorist operations abroad. For more on Gaudane's death and what it could mean for Al-Shabaab, I'm joined now by Peter Pham. He's the director of the Atlantic Council's Africa program. So how significant is this, Peter? Well, it's quite significant. Gaudane really had personalized the leadership of Al-Shabaab. He had taken responsibility for last year's attack on the Westgate Mall in Nairobi. Uh, recent attacks in Djibouti, Kenya, and of course 2010, the World Cup bombings in Kampala, Uganda. So this was a person who had taken a insurgency, brought it into Al-Qaeda in 2012. He made it part of Al-Qaeda, pledged Bayat to uh, uh, Osama bin Laden's successors. And so a very interesting person, but a very deadly person. But it's significant also not only because it demonstrates the reach of U.S. power and capabilities in this area, which is growing, but also the fact that he had eliminated most of the moderates within his organization. Anyone who opposed him, including known jihadists like Ibrahim al-Afghani, had been simply brutally eliminated. So there is now no succession to step in. Right. So what happens now to al-Shabaab? There's been some speculation since his killing that the group would splinter and that that would diminish its effectiveness. Do you see that happening? I think there's a vacuum now in Shabab and a great opportunity. The Somali government has made some appropriate gestures. It's it's offered amnesty to Shabab fighters, given them 45 days to be reintegrated. Now, it hasn't given the details, and the devil is going to be in the details, but if it can win over many of the more moderate or those who are less enthralled with this nat transnational agenda of his, then they'll redu reduce the footprint of Shabab to a smaller, hardcore group, which then, of course, can be dealt with in the same manner as I Gaudani. Think, I mean, it's interesting, Peter, whether it's Boko Haram, al-Shabaab, the Islamic State, al-Qaeda, we often hear that killing one person just creates 10 more jihadis, that actually what you do is you rally people to the cause with the deaths of these leaders who are then seen as martyrs. You, you don't seem to think that could be the case that's, here. That's often the case, but this is an exceptional case. In the case, uh, Godani had gone out of his way to eliminate other jihadis. And so, in many respects, he was a one-man show. And as a result, he didn't leave an institution. This is the, it's important for countries, but it's also important for non-state actors and even terrorist organizations to build institutions, and he didn't do that. And that may be that he, his legacy is he left the organization that he spent so much effort on much more vulnerable than he needed to because of his leadership style and his brutal totalitarian ways. He had eliminated the Shura, for example. Most terrorist groups have a council at the top. He had eliminated them about 18 months ago. So there's really going to be a vacuum. Now, if the Somali government and its international partners can step into that vacuum, I think we can make real progress. But if they don't, then I think we're, we're back to where we were. This is great to have some optimistic news on the spread of militant extremism. Thanks very much, Peter Pham, for coming Thank in. Thank you.